Hello, welcome back to Joel Explorers Tech. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at an update for the PicoGus card. The PicoGus is a ISA sound card replacement. I did another video showcasing some of the initial functionality. Since then, there's been a number of updates to the PicoGus, uh, adding Sound Blaster support, and uh, now it supports a number of different cards. Initially, it was created as a Gravis Ultrasound uh, emulator card and uses the Raspberry Pi. And the latest functionality, which I'm excited to test out, is a CD-ROM emulation uh, update in the firmware. You can use it either in the USB mode or in the Sound Blaster mode. So you're, you can have the card set up as a Sound Blaster and it will also support uh, that CD-ROM emulation. As many of us know, uh, a lot of these older drives are starting to fail. And then also it can just be cumbersome swapping out disks and uh, you know, keeping everything running. Uh, so th I think this will be a great option uh, for people to be able to emulate uh, a CD-ROM drive, load up a bunch of uh, ISO images on a USB stick, and uh, be able to, to uh, use those uh, all from the DOS prompt. So with that said, uh, let's get it all installed and start exploring. To start out, you visit the PicoGus GitHub repository. I'll put the link in the description below and go to the releases section. As of the making of this video, the latest version is the 3.1.0 version. I believe the 3.0.0 version was the uh, first one to include the CD-ROM emulation support. You can see a couple notes here on what was fixed in the 3.1 version, but you wanna download this zip here. The other thing that you will want to download is the CD-ROM driver itself for the DOS machine. On the wiki page, again, I'll provide this link in the description, they describe how to use the driver, how to uh, set up your ISO files on the USB flash, and also uh, configuring your configsys and autoexec bat files. I haven't tried the Windows 9X support yet, but uh, mostly I'm interested in the DOS support for now. Uh, so that's what I'll be showcasing here. And specifically that link for the driver is this one here, the uh, cdmke.sys. If we jump over to the files, uh, just to show what I had downloaded, so that cdmke is the, uh, when you unzip it, uh, will contain this driver. So you copy over this sys file to your DOS machine. And then also you will want in the picogus zip, there is the firmware. Uh, this main picogus.uf2 is the main firmware containing uh, the CD-ROM emulation. They also include another firmware file uh, for the PicoGus 1 uh, that had uh, network card support, I believe. Uh, but you don't need this file uh, unless you're using that version. But pr primarily, you'll want to copy these three files. Uh, the MD is the uh, documentation. You don't need to copy that if you don't want it, but I think it's nice to have it on the DOS machine directly for reference. For just a quick background on how I get things copied over, I use uh, FileZilla, just a FTP application. Um, I did another video showcasing setting up uh, networking and FTP on my uh, 46 machine. And uh, so that allows you to directly connect to the machine, copy over files, makes it a lot easier than uh, using something like a GoTech or um, other means uh, to copy files over. Um, and then the other thing would be just the CD images themselves. Um, so you just copy uh, both bin Q or ISO format files onto a uh, freshly formatted USB flash drive. I'm just using a, a four gig, uh, so enough to fit, uh, you know, half a dozen uh, CD images. And you can see here the bin Q ISO, uh, also this, uh, this Warcraft uh, Q and image format seem to work fine. I assume the, the image is, is similar to the uh, bin format, maybe even the same thing with a different name, but uh, those seem to work fine in my testing. Uh, this is on the the, my modern machine here, but these are just the exact directory of files that I copied onto the root of the USB flash drive. So let's go ahead and power up the 46 and get switched over to that and uh, do some testing. So I'm trying out a new setup here. We'll see how smoothly this goes. Using OBS, you should be seeing the 46 machine. And 
looks like it is. Okay, so uh, this is the boot menu on the 46. Uh, I've updated the auto exec pad so that the first option should be loading that driver. One thing I did notice is often on the first boot up, it will not see the CD-ROM drive uh, or the emulated CD-ROM. So you can see here it's saying uh, interface board or CD-ROM drive not ready. If I reboot, then on the second boot, it will usually pick it up. And there you go. You can see the uh, Matsushita CD-ROM OneDrive connected and our MS CDEX uh, mapping to drive D. Uh, if we go to D right now, it looks like it auto mounts the first disc. Uh, so just to show you, I've generally been mounting a disc before I visit it, but it looks like it mounts the first one by default. Uh, so in my Pico Gus directory, I've got those three files that I mentioned uh, copied over. And if you do CD list, and actually uh, just to, to show what you would need to do to flash your firmware, that is pgus init. And then I think it's, let me just double check here. Dash flash, okay. So it would be uh, pgus init flash, and then the uh, pico uf2. I'm not going to flash it because I've already flashed mine, um, but you just run this. It takes about 10-15 seconds and uh, you should be good to go. So once you have that flashed and uh, your configuration set up, uh, you can do the CD list. And as you can see there, we've got our uh, same files that I was showing on the modern machine uh, showing up here. Actually, before I launch into that, let me just show you quick also the uh, auto exec and config sys setup that I did. Uh, so we've just got uh, this line here, the MS CDEX uh, with the uh, options they specified on their wiki. Um, I'm not sure if this is required, but I also ran the uh, PGUS init, uh, setting it to Sound Blaster mode uh, before the CD-ROM was loading. The CD-ROM support is only available on the Sound Blaster or the USB firmware modes. Uh, so you can't use it with the Gravis Ultrasound or some of the other different modes that they have. And then if we open the config sys, we can see this is the CD-ROM drive uh, itself here, the CDMKE. Uh, with the port and the slash Q, I believe, uh, is setting it so that if the um, if you're on a different firmware mode or for whatever reason the uh, the Pico Gus isn't uh, picked up on boot, uh, it'll just go past this this command uh, when it doesn't see the drive. Back to our uh, CD list, um, and let's try out uh, Day of the Tentacle. So to do that, you'll want to do pgus init and then cd load as you see at the bottom of the uh, output there and then four. Now if we go to the D drive and let's go ahead and launch in. I don't think you should drink that. Boop. 
It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. Smarter. More aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. Like I could. Take, Take on, on the world. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, where's his secret lab? So as you can see, uh, it runs pretty great on this game, um, loading from the CD. Uh, we're not doing full motion video here, but uh, this one works great. Let's go ahead and try something a little more taxing. How about uh, Command and Conquer? So we'll give this a, oh, actually, wait, wait. of course we gotta switch the disc first. So switch to disk two. Just make sure we're on that. Yep. And now we'll launch into Command and Conquer. Global Defense Initiative selected. Are you picking this up? Good. I know you need more deep background, but we're up against it. Nod forces have fortified this beachhead at X-16Y42. Intelligence is still coming in, so we can't tell you a lot. But we found a chink in their armor. Commander Carter can sneak you and some backup forces on shore right here. You may get some artillery support from his gunboats, but this is mostly grunt work. Your mission is simple. Knock out all fortifications, eliminate all Nod troops, and establish a beachhead by building your base. Good luck. As you can see, this runs pretty great as well. There's one more thing I wanted to try out that I actually haven't tried out yet. There is a option for games that have uh, multiple discs where it should swap the disc uh, based on taking the disc out 
or the uh, USB drive out and reinserting it. So right now we're on CNC disk one. So I believe if we take it out and reinsert, we should get disk two. So let me try that. Okay, so I took it out and reinserted. And we'll see if that actually... And it did. So now I've got the second disc inserted. So that would work for games where you're swapping out the CD in game. So, so far I've been uh, pretty impressed with the CD-ROM emulation support. Uh, as I mentioned, the only thing I've noticed is on that boot up, uh, sometimes it was not uh, detecting. I don't actually have a uh, battery in this 46 at the moment. So it could be something with the, the BIOS. I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, if there would be anything persisting that would uh, cause that. But uh, definitely after a reboot, it seems fine. Uh, and I haven't had any issues getting it to start up after that. And performance wise, I think it definitely fits with this era of machine. This is my uh, DX266. It is uh, about at a, uh, a double speed or uh, a little bit slower CD-ROM drive, uh, which is just fine for a lot of these early games. I really appreciate uh, Ian Scott and uh, all the uh, other people that are contributing to the Pico Gus project. Uh, continuing to add features. Uh, it's definitely been a, uh, a really cool uh, device to have and I uh, look forward to seeing what else they can uh, add to this uh, really cool card. I think that just about wraps it up for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Friends? Friends, we've only gone out together three times, and already you're telling me you just want to be friends? You never gave me a chance, and for that... You'll fry like a pork sausage. It's not that I don't like you, it's just that, well, you're too nice a guy, I guess. I think I'd rather go out with someone more of it unpredictable. Hello. This doesn't look like the Lincoln Tunnel, Sam. Looks to me like a marginally volatile hostage situation, Max. Ooh, does this mean we get to kick some puffy white mad scientist butt? Can't think of a reason not to. You'll be of no use, freelance police. With the flip of a lever, my ungrateful lunch date will be reduced to a half cup of disoriented atomic matter. I knew he wasn't a real doctor. Uh, shall I confront, subdue, and pummel the suspected perpetrator, Sam? Sick him up, little buddy.